I got to try like that. Oh, be like, oh, 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 oh my god, I am done. Wait, where are you live though? Where are you based? I'm joking. I'm, I'm no, I can do it. I'm absolutely good. I'm based in London. I the Lord said, said Vanessa speak. And, um, Look at that. Can you, know, you spoke? You better oh. speak. <laughs> <laughs> you have your name on that. Yo, I just got. <laughs> I am so thrilled for tonight, the conversation that we are having. Um, the intention, um, like Juke said, is really to kind of talk about creative mental blocks and, you know, just things that we all go through as creatives, entrepreneurs, and really just beings in general. And the one person that I thought would be absolutely amazing to talk to about this is Leticia Wright, who is right back there. So please come on down. <clears throat> hey, you can grab your mic here. Um, so when we are, when we're finished, we're going to have a Q and A, open up a Q and A for you guys to have any, um, questions that you may have to ask her, but she is just, I'm honored to sit here with you tonight. Truly. Thank you. Um, you are just prolific. I am enamored by your grace, your strength and your courage. Um, and she is just a phenomenal actress, producer and all the things. And as we all know, she is in the star Marvel movie, Black Panther. Give it up. That comes out November 11th, so please, you guys, get your tickets, get your tickets. So um, let us begin. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for coming through. <laughs> Do you have anything to say to the people before we get going? Just I hope you enjoy the night. <laughs> You are a phenomenal actress, producer. You started off your career guest starring in different TV shows. You're obviously in box office hits from Ready Player One and of course, Black Panther. How did you know that acting was something you wanted to pursue? Well, I guess as a child, I found that stories on TV, um, was really intriguing. I grew up in Guyana, I was born in Guyana, and majority of our TV influence is from America. Um, <laughs> so I grew, up I grew up watching Full House, Family Matters, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, um, and I just was always intrigued by the way stories um, would make me feel. Mm -hmm. And I moved to the UK, and thankfully, it was a teacher that kind of invited me to an after-school acting class. Yeah. Um, I don't know what she saw in me, mm -hmm. but that was the beginning of my journey of realizing that maybe being a storyteller, being someone who could play a character, I think in a way it was also therapeutic for me mm. to have a voice as a child. And slowly but surely, it just kept finding its way into my life. And I think that solidified for me one summer when I was watching, um, I was watching uh, movies uh, illegally. <laughs> uh, I didn't have the funds to buy it now, so don't, don't come here and judge me. But I had a good old lime wire and some downloading <laughs> devices. Y'all know what lime wire is. I'm and I done. Found this, I found this movie. <laughs> and um, I watched it. I bought the DVD now, Akeel and the Bee. I have bought it. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank God for, for finance. Um, but yeah, I watched it um, on my laptop. And I saw Kiki Palmer. And I saw Angela Bassett. And these are two black women. Mm. Um, and the roles were not stereotypical. It was a little, it was a young girl who wanted to be a champion in spelling. Mm. And their 
was Angela Bassett being her mom and supporting her. And it was a simple, yet beautiful, yet powerful story that started my journey in taking acting seriously. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that how important it is for us to be able to see us on the screen? So switching gears a bit, during production for Black Panther 2, you, some may know, some may not know, that you got severely injured. You had a shoulder fracture, you had a really bad concussion, and after that, you proceeded to go into rehab to get your mental back together, your physical body, your emotional, spiritual, all the things. There's a couple things I wanna unpack here. Two, one is I believe that whenever we face those adversities and those setbacks, there's another level, there's another iteration of insight that we gain when we hit those setbacks. So one, what insight did you gain during that time? And two, what did that process look like for you? Yeah, it was one of the most challenging um, obstacles of my entire life and my mm. career. Um, I'd gone through different stages of um, challenges before, whether it's dealing with depression, um, mm. you're an actor trying to find your way, trying to get the next job, um, trying to survive really and keep hold of your dream. And depression sinks in and, 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 it, and it grabs hold of you and you don't know what to do. And I, and I navigated that through with God, and that was a, a beautiful time in my life where I felt free. Mm. And as things go up, there's a time when things come down. Mm. And that accident was, was a crash. And I was, I was thinking to myself, like, how do you move forward? Um, your body's not working the way that it should. Um, your mind is not working the way that it should. You need to get back to your movie. How do you do this? Yeah. Um, and for the first time in my life, I didn't have the answer for that. Mm. Um, for the first time in my life, I didn't know how I could move to the next step. And I'll be honest with you, it was my friends and my family yeah. that kept sowing seeds of belief. There are some people in this room that's been praying for me um, in the hours of the night and I've not seen them, heard them, but I just know that they have um, because I'm here. Um, and God used those friends, those families, family members to sow seeds of encouragement when I couldn't do it for myself, to pray for me when I couldn't do it for myself because I was not able to pray. I was really down. And slowly but surely, I had to remind myself of the why. Come on. And I remember when I, you know, I took, I, I, I took on a film, I went to New Mexico and I had to meet with my director, Ryan, and you know, I had to talk to him about what the next film would be. And I was struggling because I just lost my brother, Chadwick, and I just thought, I can't, I don't know how to do this. Mm. And God was like, just pick two whys. Um, and that will help you follow through. And I said, God, if I can honor you with my talent, because we all have gifts and talents, and we have to use them correctly yeah. um, to, to, to impact and nurture others. I said, if I can honor you and I can honor Chad, then that's my why of doing this. It wasn't about Shuri and what she would, any of that. It wasn't yeah. about any of that. It was about how do I use my talent to honor God and honor Chad? So then when this unfortunate event happened and I've got people sowing seeds and encouraging me and I'm trying to find a way out of this mental block, I'm trying to find a way out of this thing that's really robbing my joy, mm. um, I had to go back to the why. Mm. And the why was, I have purpose. Come on. I deserve to be here. Mm. I deserve to have an opportunity to exist and to live and to, and to have my talent be shown and encourage others. And also my brother, like he, he did the most remarkable thing. He handled um, his health in such a beautiful but private way. He didn't want to scar us with, with any fear. He protected us and I thought that was so honorable and so brave of him to do that. 
But at the same time, he gave us like five films back to back. So I just looked at all of these things that was happening and I just, I just went back to the why and I went back to, I, I kind of went into the future and I thought to myself, if I can make it through this and I can tell the testimony, someone on the other side who needs to hear that encouragement will be able to feel empowered and I'm, and that's what's happening right now. Like my test, like I made it, I went back and I finished my film and that thing is coming out November 11th. Yes, yes it is, yes it is, yes so, it yeah, is. So yeah, man. Woo, that's so good, so good. I wanna go a little bit deeper for people in the room or even people watching. What if they don't know their why? And when you say that, you mean, what if they don't know their why, of why to continue? Um, or, you know, how, how do you find your why? How do you find your why? Yeah. I guess, like, reevaluating what you want in life. Yeah, Like, no matter what your talent is or what your purpose is, like, why do you want to do it? And I think just going back to the center of who you are um, and, 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 and how you can use, use your talent in a way to push things forward or be of, of meaning, of, of, of purpose. Yeah. And I think it's important for us to always realign ourselves with that because, yeah, like when I was going through that situation, I didn't even know if I was going to do acting again. Like, I, I didn't even know. I was like, are people going to watch my films again? Like, I don't, I don't even know. I, you know, all the things that made sense didn't make sense anymore. Yeah, right. And I just lost a sense of purpose and identity. I was very confused. I was very angry. Um, I felt really alone. And, and, yeah, just reminding myself that, yeah, like, I, I deserve to be here. It took a while. Yeah. But I think that that could be that could be the ways in which we can hold on to our whys and how do we how do we gain it like going back to the drawing board like what does this mean like why do I want my talent to impact the lives of this other person yeah. or such and such like um and I and I guess in a way slowly but surely it finds its way back around and you find that that life again in what you do yeah. I hope that makes sense no that makes complete sense yeah so after the accident, you obviously had to get back on set. Yeah. There was a lot of hurdles that you had to jump, mentally, emotionally, physically. And I think as creatives, entrepreneurs, and just beings in general, we have this tension between are we enough or are we doing enough? And, you know, especially as creatives, is our output enough? And what is, you know, what does your toolbox look like? I know for me, a lot of times creatively, I can go from one spectrum to the next of like, is this enough? Is this not enough? And one of the things I grab onto, and granted, doesn't work all the time, but I'll grab onto is remembering that I'm pulling from a place of revelation and not from a place of response. And that helps me to really say, okay, my creative output is enough. How did you know, or what is one tool when you got back on set that you knew creatively that who you were after the accident was enough? That's a great question. Um, that's a phenomenal question. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know? That I was enough. That your and your creative output was and my enough. Creative output was enough. You know what? That is where faith steps in. Mm. That's when faith steps in. Come on. Because we're human, right? Like we don't know if something's gonna work. Mm. We we doubt all the time. I I felt really nervous all the time. I was like. You know, can I do this? You have that inner, inner work and that inner battle with yourself. Like, can I really do this? Yeah. And that's where faith steps in. Yeah. That's faith that you are where you're meant to be. Mm -hmm. um, that's faith that 
you know, God is not going to take you this far to leave you. Yeah. You know, and I think for me, what helped was that I just zoned in and I just made it very simple for myself. The pressure is there, the anxiety, the doubts, but I made it very simple for myself and I said, if I can just tell the truth one scene at a time and if I can just apply myself with excellence one scene at a time, mm. then I've done all that I could do mm. and it's up to God to do the rest. Yeah. Like, I can't, I don't, I can't control everything. Yeah. But that inner strength starts to come out on a daily basis because that inner strength that was in me prior to what happened is now taking, taking its, its home, taking its place. That's good. So, so as it's taking its place, I'm able to, I'm able to see that in different circumstances and, and in different um, situations, I'm handling myself um, I'm handling, my, handling myself in a way that uh, only, only uh, it's just, I'm smiling because this is my grandma. My I auntie. know, I know. We could take a moment. We um, could take a moment. But I'm handling myself in, in, a, in a way that is of maturity. Yeah. Um, I'm handling myself like the woman that God is uh, building me to be. Yeah. So I guess to answer that, you know, you go back to, you go back to the simplicity of, of, of applying excellence each day, bit by bit, moment by moment. Mm. And then you see, you see that strength coming out. You know, I see strength in me that I never saw before. Um, but yeah. you can't get that strength unless you walk through that difficult, that difficult time. Yeah, that's good. There's a lot. I don't, it's like a well. <laughs> I'm trying to give y'all some water. It's good to get a little bit deep. <laughs> but just yeah. a little bit deep. No, that's really, really good. Okay, switching gears just a little bit. Yeah. In your career, you get an ample amount, I'm sure, of no's and rejections be of, with auditions. And I think all of us as creatives and entrepreneurs, we get a lot of just closed doors, if you will. And I believe we have this proclivity to think that no's and rejections are bad. And we have this unhealthy relationship with those no's. We have this unhealthy relationship with rejection because it disrupts our belief system of who we believe we are. You know, it sometimes can devalue the way we, we look at ourselves. For me, I know that's something that I struggle with. What is your relationship like with no's and rejection? Um, <laughs> at first, I, I struggled with it. I started acting like professionally when I was 17. I'm now 29 as of next week, Monday. Hey. Nearly 30, y'all. Hey. I got to get it together. Um, you got it together. <laughs> um, but yeah, I struggled with it. Um, you're a teenager. You're going into audition rooms. You're, you don't have the means to get headshots. You know, um, you don't have the means to go to acting class. You know, you, you call, you're calling, calling, you know, family member like, yo, bust me that 50 pounds so I could go. <laughs> you know, your family members are coming together, like sewing into your dreams as a kid. There's yeah. people in this room that has sewed into my dreams mm. for a very long time and to the development of who I am. There's powerful women in this room that has um, sewed into me. Um, allowing me to beat the drums in the garden <laughs> as they tried to sleep <laughs> after work <laughs> at Tessa. Um, and just allowing me to be a creative, free um, young woman. And as you grow up and you get all of these yeses and support from your family, the industry doesn't care about that. Not at and all. And they will crush you <laughs> yes. and make you prove that you belong there. So when I was, um, when I was getting into acting, I didn't have the means to like get headshots and uh, you know go to RADA and all of these different things. And I would I would you know go to the local photograph place. He didn't know what a headshot was, but he knew how to take a picture. <laughs> and man, I took I took these pictures with this this down the road like maybe like the Turkish brother down the road. <laughs> and I just got some prints, and I just went to every casting office um, and put a CV. And I created all of the school plays that I did, and I stamped, st uh, stapled it together, put it through the door, 
And that was like my first no's. Like I tried to get an agent, mm. sending letters, sending emails. That was, those were my first no's. I got those no's when I was like 17, 18. Um, and every time I got a no, I just had to go back to my why. Mm. And that why was, I wanted, I wanted to inspire um, young people. I wanted to inspire someone the way that Kiki Palmer inspired me. I wanted a chance to tell stories mm. and to make impact the way that other, other films made me feel. So mm. I went back to my why and I kept pushing. Um, and you get a yes. You get someone saying, I think you're talented and I think you can be a part of this agency. And then you try an audition and it doesn't work and you get a no and you step back, you reevaluate. You say, okay, maybe I need to go to drama school and maybe I need some acting classes. Yeah. So I go to acting classes and I meet John Boyega, Damson Idris, and we're just kids yeah. and we just want to learn and we just want to grow. So that, that yes in this avenue is leading you to another yes mm -hmm. in Top Boy and then that no is leading you to um, a short film. Mm -hmm. um, that no is that no is leading me to an audition that I need to be to um, to meet Chadwick Boseman. Like yeah. it literally, all of these no's lead to the yeses that I need. So I guess, That's good. yeah. So I guess for me, the way I've handled no's prior, it was difficult. But all of those no's and the no's that I've also said. Mm. So people don't see the no's that I say. Mm. People only. Oh, people only think I like the industry. I have to say no too. Mm. Is it? Does it add? Does it? Does it um, contribute to my spirit? Mm. Does it? Will it make my family proud? That's um, good. Is it integral? Mm. Does it fit my morals? Mm. Um, am I compromising? Mm. And if those things, if those things are starting to to ra uh, have a red flag, I have to say no. Um, it's not just about money. I've, yeah. I've said no to so much. Um, and I'd rather wait until it's my divine time where I'm doing something that if I pass away tomorrow, you say she made an impact. That's what I want. Ooh. So I handle no's now as God's, God's way of guiding me. I don't see it as that person rejected me. I just see it as I'm not meant for that. Um, what is for me will not pass me by, and if it passes me by, it's not for me. Come on. So that's that's how I handle my nose. Well, well, <laughs> well. You just stumped me there. I ain't got nothing to say after that. <laughs> you could you could take take a beat, take a beat, take a beat, because you just definitely take take a beat. Wow, that was that was that was rich. That was really good, you know, because we all we're, all we're human, yeah. you know, and of course we want that yes, and we sometimes believe. Now, take me to a moment where you believed mm. that it was for you. Black Panther. Mm. Um, I write. I'm what fifteen. Um, I make a vision board. I put all the things on that vision board. I put films, I put flights around the world. I, I, put, I put my dreams on a vision board. And sometimes when life hit me down and I've ripped that vision board up and then I have to paste it all back together, put it back up, have faith again. And I was chasing that thing of purpose. I wanna make someone feel the way Kiki Palmer made me feel. Yeah. That I was a black girl and I meant something. Yeah. And here comes Shuri. Mm. So I get this script. Prior to this, I had given up acting. Really? Yes. So, so how, what, was, what was that time like, like? That was when I was struggling with like, just depression. Mm. And I realized that I was chasing acting for the wrong reasons. Mm. I wanted acting for validation, fame, acknowledgement, and not for the purity of affecting people's hearts. I wanted to affect people's hearts in a positive way, but that got tainted mm. with the quote unquote chasing the dream. Mm. And it tainted the purity of me just 
waiting on God and trusting that things will work out. So I had to take a step back and then I, I found myself with my friends who all seemed very happy um, following <laughs> Jesus. I was like, why y'all so happy? What's this? What y'all doing? Um, and I went on this spiritual journey for myself mm-hmm. and I um, gave my life to the Lord and I found for the first time like just a, a sense of peace mm-hmm. and it's a peace that you can't buy. Yeah. And it was like this peace that I, no matter what happens, I'm going to be okay and I'm centered and nothing, I don't need anything else to validate. I'm God's child, like I'm yeah. God's daughter, yeah. I'm enough. Yeah. And that was the foundation that he built on. That was the foundation that was able to be built on. So I went back into acting and I started to pray. What do you want me to do? Because I'm definitely not picking right. Because right. if I don't get something, I'm down, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I can't pick myself up. So God's navigating and I'm getting these beautiful opportunities and here comes Black Panther. So I see this script and I send a tape and I forget about it. And I send another tape and I forget about it. But I start researching, like, what is this Marvel thing with this king and this princess? And what's this? Because I don't know comic books like that. And I remember researching and I saw Shuri and I saw Black Panther. And I was like, okay. And I let it go. And I remember just being in my room and just praying. And God was like, you should pray about Shuri and Black Panther. And I was like, I don't know. It was like, you should pray about it. And I prayed and I said, God, you know, I don't know what this role means. I don't know why you're pressing it on my heart. But if this is of meaning, if this is of purpose, I want to do it. It's, mm. It seems good so far. Mm. And that was the first time that without a shadow of, of doubt, I believed. Mm. And he pushed my, my, my belief system. Mm. And when I say that, I mean... Like, I was, I was then getting ready to go meet Chad and, and Ryan. And before I met Chad and Ryan, God was like, I'm going to test your faith. I'm going to test out how much you believe you can get this role. He's like, tell your agents you booked the role. I was like, you are crazy. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, yeah. Go sit down and talk to your agents and tell them you're coming home with the role of Black, um, Shuri and Black Panther. I didn't even know the magnitude of this film. I didn't even know what Shuri would even mean to the world. Mm. I didn't even know what we would have been making. I didn't know. I just was just praying and hearing. So I sat down with my agents before I went on this flight to LA and I said, I have something to tell you. Um, I am going to be Shuri in Black Panther. And I just believed Mm. that that's what was going to be happening for me. So I went to LA met Chad, met Ryan, came home, had to go to um, Atlanta, do another, sc- another screen test. And I just kept, I just believed, like, you wasn't going to knock me. I just believed, like, yeah. this was going to happen for me. And I remember I was at this bus stop in London. My agents at the time, they called me, and they're like, yo, like, Ryan wants to talk a little bit more about the, the movie. And I was just like, God, like, is this going to, like, and that's the first time I was just like, I believe. Like, <laughs> basically, I did my part. Why, like, why know? am I going through another who? <laughs> didn't you? Didn't you? Like, you said I got the part. Why am I doing this again? So, <laughs> so they're telling me Ryan wants to go through this script with me and work work with me a bit more on it, and it's gonna take three months. And I was like, what takes three months to do? I was like, if that's what it takes for me to get this part. For him to believe that I'm, the, that right. I'm sure he okay. Right. Yeah. And then they all just, they were basically pranking me. And they were just like, you booked the part of Shuri and Black Panther. And I was just like screaming on the road, wow. like, yes, Jesus. Oh my yeah. God, yes. yes. And I went on the bus and I tapped my oyster. And I, I just thought to myself, in a few years, I can never get on the bus again. <laughs> like ever. <laughs> um, so that was the first time in my life that, 
I just believed, mm. like, I just believed that something yeah, like this could happen for me. Yeah. And I just wanted to play her because she was so inspirational. Like, when I read about her, I just thought, she could, she's really beautiful. She's a princess. She's a scientist. And then I got on set. And then, obviously, you know, you're not confident. You don't know if you can do it. You're in a room with Angela Bassett. Chadwick Boseman, sure. Lupita Nyong'o, and you're just feeling so small. You're like, I don't know if I, I doubted yeah. so much if yeah. Shuri, if I was being good enough. Mm. I didn't think I was enough. Mm. And then I saw the movie and I was like, oh, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got that wrong. Oh, that's real good. That's good. I was like, she's fire. That's fire. She's fire. amazing. She, she's a beast. She's a beast. The power of a belief, y'all. The power yeah. of belief, right? I believed, man. Ooh, believed. the power of belief. Who were you before you attained this global recognition? And who are you now? That's such a funny question because my family's <laughs> in the room. <laughs> so you can't lie. <laughs> who was I before all of this? I'm just, I'm just, I was just... I was just this little girl from Guyana that just had um, this gift that God gave me. Yeah. I was um, just passionate, um, innocent, and I just always believed like something could happen good for me and my family. Yeah. Like, I just always believed that something's going to happen. Like, I don't know how or what or where or why, but just something good's going to happen. Yeah. So I'm just that young girl from, like, Guyana with dreams, in it. Mm -hmm. And then I grew up in Tottenham, held on to my dreams. And who I am now is a 29-year-old woman um, navigating... Um, a beautiful career in Hollywood, a beautiful um, team of people around me, um, beautiful family, and I'm looking back at that little girl from Guyana like, I'm proud of you. Yeah. Like, thank you for thank you for believing in me, of what I, of what I could be. Yeah. You know, thank good. you for believing in me, and um, and I'm. Um, Gonna hopefully when I'm like, I don't know, 60 or something, I'll be like, 29 year old you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. Yes, you will. Okay, lastly, because I know I wanna open it up for you guys to ask questions. So, you know, I believe too much is given, much is required. You know, the things that you've gone through, the adversities that you've gone through, you've obviously needed all these things to get to where you are today. It's funny because I believe that in evolution of us, we always want the next thing. And in order for us to get to the next thing, we essentially have to go through hell so that we can gain that extra strength, that we can produce the certain things that we need to produce out of ourselves to sustain for where we're going. And that's pretty much what you have gone through. Now, looking back at your trajectory and your journey, what would you tell that little girl knowing that this was the trajectory of what it took for you to get here, what would you tell her? I would definitely tell her that she's fearfully and wonderfully made. I would yeah. tell her that um, God does not make mistakes. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but God does not make mistakes when he makes us. Mm. Um, people um, could try to say things to you, knock you off your dreams, knock you off your path. Yeah. Um, words are very important. How we treat each other is very important. Mm. Um, and I would just say to her, you know, when the kids are bullying you in school, hey, you, you finna be a toy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was not humble. <laughs> I was not humble. Yeah, when they tell you no, when they mock you. It's okay. You can give that little nod. It's okay. It's going to be a toy. We know your heart. We know your heart. It's going to be a toy. 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 Like a whole toy. 
Your kids, 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 kids go buy that toy. Oh um, my gosh. I would tell her to keep dreaming big, man. Yeah, that's good. Keep dreaming big. Yeah. I had this, yeah, that, that's the phrase. I used to love this song by Jasmine Sullivan um, called Dream Big. Yeah. Um, I keep telling her to, to stay on that path because um, you mm -hmm. will be of purpose. Yeah. Um, you will uh, inspire yeah. many, many young people um, just, just by you following your dreams. And I'll tell her that, yeah, man, just be you, innit? Yeah. Just be you with your little guy in these accent slash American accent slash <laughs> British accent. Just be yourself. Yeah. Know that you're beautiful and know that, yeah, like you're going to help change the lives of so many people. Small, um, bit by bit, step by step, but yeah. along the way, um, you'll make a difference in the world. That's, That's how good. I say it to her. That's so good. Yeah, man. Okay, lastly, lastly. No, please. I love sitting so, here talking with you. Do you? Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, last. Me and Natalie next? go way back. We go way back, Way back. What's next? Why are you laughing? <laughs> What's next? Career-wise? Anything. Um, Career-wise, obviously, Black Panther's coming out. Um... I have other films coming out too. Um, a film I did in Ireland called Aisha. Um, Silent Twins, which I'm really proud of. Um, I want to get more into producing. Yeah. I want to I wanna step into that arena a little bit more. I want to keep developing and, and growing to be the woman that God wants me to be. Um, I just want to leave a legacy in it, yeah. and and I hope that we can all um, do that for each other, and and I hope that as I leave a legacy, you leave a legacy, no matter what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, that's next. Just Tish, Tish trying to take over the world. Pretty much. <laughs> Thank you so much, y'all. Welcome. Tish, you're right. <laughs>